Here's a functionally choreographed slings movement sequence. For the first round, I won't be talking to not interfere with your thoughts. While I'm moving, contemplate the why, the movement intentions. Ready? Thoughts? You've got probably plenty and so do I because there are many reasons for doing these exercises and doing them in this sequence. So I will limit the information to just a few pieces, I promise. So starting in a centered upright body position, I started the sequence with arm arc and arm circle. Now, this is a reoccurring movement pattern, and it's certainly much easier practiced in standing than when you're kneeling and forward folded and many other things are going on. So preparation. 
It also engages spine extensor muscles very slightly when doing the arm arc or even the whole superficial back line, just in a very gentle manner. When lowering the arms, we inhale, focusing on the expansion of the rib cage. It's deep front line and lateral line, and it's also a way to bring a sense of ease into the shoulders, allowing the shoulder girdle to rest on the rib cage. And because there will be a lot of arm movements and also weight bearing, toning of the back arm lines especially, it's really good before going into the sequence to have a sense of ease in the shoulders. Now from here, it was the arm arc, and then I incorporated a rhythmical double knee bend. And that was in preparation to the double knee bends in the sequence, in the lunge position, and also in the inverted V. Once again, much easier practice in a upright standing position. So from here, it was a releve with the arm arc, the plie, and then extending the legs again and lowering down, not all the way, just to the place where the heels are above the floor. Now, if you have been thinking about ballet, that's a very nice thought, but that's not the intention. The intention is lateral ankle stability, strengthening of the muscles of the foot and, of course, calf muscles as well, and then toe extension and weight bearing on the big toe. So strengthening the flexor hallucis longus, especially in focus here, so lowest portion of the deep front line. Also strengthening the tibialis anterior and the adductor muscles, and then from the adductors, of course, the myofascia continues up into the pelvic floor. So it's about bringing the deep front line to the forefront of the intention. Now, I keep the heels just above the floor, so there's a little bit more activity in the lower portion of the superficial back line and also in the lower portion of the deep front line. So thinking of the tibialis posterior to lift the medial arch of the feet as I'm rolling down, this energy travels up into the adductors and the pelvic floor. And in this way, the deep front line supports the superficial back line, which really is the main movement executor here. At the lowest point, I slow down for a moment to have time and guide my inhalation into the lower back, sense the expansion in the lower back and also the back of the pelvis, the sacral area, and then rolling back up. So movement interplay, superficial back line, deep front line, centering the upper body, and then once again the releve, and then separating the heels, arms to shoulder level, and then it's the single leg balance sequence. So I started with a heel raise, so there's already a slight weight transfer to the standing leg, and then into single leg balance, a knee lift, leg extension, very briefly bringing in the superficial front line lower portion, and then taking the leg back into an aeroplane position, which again, I held for longer, the superficial back line, gesture, <laughs> leg side, is in movement focus, and it is a line of endurance, muscularly and fascially, so we hold it for a little bit longer, and then step down into a 90-90 lunge, and in 1990 lunge, the superficial backline certainly is working. However, we have a big movement focus on the functional backline. So we want the functional line to assist the superficial backline. There is also stabilization, dynamic stabilization. So deep front line has been engaged before in preparation for the single leg balance and also the split stance here. So dynamic stabilization provided by the deep front line and also the lateral line. Therefore, I'm raising my arms overhead when I go down to increase the fascial tension in the upper portion of the lateral line, provide more dynamic stabilization. From here, I went into lateral flexion, so adding a side bend for the lateral line itself, but also for the deep front line. So another big goal we have is to actively lengthen hip flexor muscles on the open side and of course also associated fascia. Now, if you're thinking of psoas major, it goes all the way up to the 12th thoracic vertebra. You bring more lengths into the psoas as you go into a side bend when going down into the 90-90 lunge position. 
So we, now we have the combination of active lengthening in front of the left hip, if you're doing it with me, otherwise it's my right hip. <laughs> and then we have the previously mentioned functional backline even more in movement focus. So that would be from the vastus lateralis on my left side to the gluteus maximus on my left side to the latissimus dorsi on my right side. And then coming back to a centered alignment, slowly going down. I pause here for a moment. As you can see, I have full toe extension, which I have prepared in my balancing position on both feet. And then knee down onto the floor, forward fold. I'm unloading the toes of the back foot go into the reverse. So from dorsiflexion into plantar flexion, let the toe flexors, let them soften, let them rehydrate, so the, the fascia. So let the foot be very, very soft and then lifting back up. Now we call this unwind. So it was a reverse side bend to create a sense of balance in the upper body. And then from here, it was a shift. So I shifted the body back and then I added again the arm movement. Now, before I'm going on, this is an excellent exercise for the spine extensors and the, really from the knee upwards, the superficial back line. And it's also beautiful in combination with 1990 lunge because the short hip flexors and their fascia, here they soften. So this is the rehydration phase for many of the hip flexors and their fascia after the lunge. So we gave that a little bit of, or I gave that a little bit of time. I was doing chest shifts, stay shifted back, added the arm circle, the known movement pattern with the arms. And then I added in the crescent lunge, actively lengthening the superficial front line from the base to the top and also strengthening the superficial front line from the knee upwards. And then from here, I went back passing on a lot of work to the superficial back line and taking work away from the superficial front line. So letting the superficial front line rest. Also, again, the hip flexors and their fascia, let them rehydrate. And then there was the arm pattern again. And this is also very specific. So we go for one quarter of the sequence into extension, hip and spine extension opening the very reactive, protective, superficial front line. And then for three quarters of the movement, we let it soften. We pass on a lot of work to the endurance, uplifting, supportive, superficial back line. When we go forward, we tension the fascial tissue of the superficial front line and of course of hip flexor muscles. And then when you go back, you soften the tissue, especially across the front of the hips. And that is something many of us benefit from. So I'm going one more time into the crescent lunge, spine extension, very nicely complementing the roll down from the beginning, just as an added benefit here. So now I'm here in this kneeling lunge position. Toes of the back foot are curled it under. I came back into lunge and now the already practiced rhythmical double knee bend. I used it here to step back elastically into an inverted V. And then I held the inverted V position for a moment, giving my pelvic floor muscles a break, unloading them in terms of organ weight and just let them really be a little bit relaxed or lengthened in part because especially the 1990 lunge uses a lot of pelvic floor strength. And of course, the crescent lunge and the shift also use pelvic floor. So we take some work away from the pelvic floor muscles. And then I added a big wave. So now maybe there is a difference perceptible in the left and the right side of the body. Does one hip feel more open than the other hip? Did one side of the spine articulate more easily than the other spine because of the exercise sequence that was done before? And then after that, I'm bringing back the double knee bend. So double knee bend, and then I did a leg extension. To, so the same rhythm that was practiced before. And if I wanted to, from here, I could go into a double knee bend and then hop, <laughs> which would be just a very nice mm, add-on or a very nice progression to what you have done before. The arm lines are prepared, 
the, the rhythm is prepared and the movement has been embodied. And then I was in my forward fold and I made it very soft. A melting forward fold, knee slightly bent. Just to give the stabilizing muscles a break, the spine extensors and also the shoulders. Unload the ribcage. Shoulders soft. Neck muscles just lengthening in a relaxed way. And then from here again, engaging through the center and then curling up, finding balance front and back, inside out. What do you think? Curious? If so, I look forward to sharing a lot more with you. Thank you for staying with me.